Hi. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Doug Denny, the Director of Technical Marketing for the Dedicated Infrastructure Business Unit at Rackspace. And today we're joined by some storage experts uh, from Rackspace and our partners at EMC, who we'll introduce in a minute after we get through some housekeeping. Um, this is a follow-on series to the Cloud Office Hours Hangout run by uh, Alan Bush and Drew Cox that's been running now for the last couple of years. And um, they have a great format where they bring experts to the table to talk about all things that are happening in public cloud. And uh, through the course of that series, we've got a lot of questions from viewers and customers about dedicated infrastructure and what place does it have in today's cloudy world. And so we spun up in our business unit this series uh, to talk through those types of issues. Um, we host the Deep Dive series Hangouts on the second, third, and fourth Wednesday of every month. And every month we have a theme such as uh, security or hybrid or performance. Um, and uh, next month is cost, this month is performance. So um, in addition, in every session we try to talk about real world things that are useful to people that are out there trying to solve problems. Um, and we generally offer up some sort of downloadable asset, like a case study or a reference architecture for our viewers to review after the show. Um, in this case, we'll be talking through a couple use cases and um, <clears throat> in case studies. And again, w you can download those right there from the viewing page by filling out the form and getting access. Uh, if you want to review any of the other content we've produced in the past, please go to rackspace.com slash deep dive, and you can find everything that we've done uh, in the past, but also the upcoming sessions as well. Finally, if you have questions, please use the Q&A feature of the Google Hangout, and we'll let those queue up for a bit, and towards the end of the show, we'll, we'll dive into those questions. and. Um, or if you're watching on demand instead of live, just email your questions to customercare at rackspace.com and that goes to me and my team. With no further ado, we'll jump into the intro with our guests. We've got Marcus from Rackspace, Dirk, and Jeff from EMC. I'll start with you, Marcus. Uh, Introduce yourself. What do you do for us here at Rackspace? So, Marcus Johnson, product management at uh, Rackspace, focusing on our um, dedicated storage and uh, managed backup. Awesome. Thanks for joining us again. This is our, I believe, your second time to be on the show, so really appreciate right. it. Can you believe they let me back? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, how about you, Jeff? Uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Ally with EMC. I'm a senior systems engineer uh, for Rackspace with the EMC uh, relationship. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for showing up today. We definitely are looking forward to hearing from you. And then uh, Dirk as well. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Dirk Nam, and I'm the account executive dedicated to Rackspace. Uh, we have a great partnership between the two companies, and uh, look forward to the discussion today. Thanks. Excellent. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is a few things, um, primarily oriented around the, the idea of performance with storage platforms, um, particularly those from EMC that we offer our customers here at Rackspace. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what EMC storage platforms and solutions Rackspace offers um, and how. Uh, we're going to talk about the concept of hybrid storage, specifically the VNX platform, and uh, what that offers uh, customers in terms of performance capabilities and the right use cases or scenarios in which a VNX makes sense. Um, and then we're going to talk about all flash storage, just in general, like what what's all the fuss is about with flash storage today. And specifically, we're going to talk about EMC Extreme IO, uh, the platform itself, what it delivers, and how Rackspace will operate and deliver that platform to our customers. And then finally, we'll talk about just sort of general operational challenges that surround managing storage platforms um, and what we've learned about managing and operating storage at Rackspace and how we try to make our customers' lives easier by taking a lot of that off their plate. Um, anything else to add from you guys? I'm good. Yeah, that's good. No, it sounds great. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's dive in. Um, so let's jump into hybrid storage platforms. So, real quick, you know, we've got people that are watching that are storage operators. They get their hands dirty every day, but we've also got folks who are not so hands-on. So, just real quick, what does a hybrid storage actually mean? So this is Jeff Ally. So hybrid storage is basically, uh, I look at it as an information lifecycle management within an array. So you have various tiers of storage dependent on capacities and performance. 
and you have automated tiering uh, called FAST, which is fully automated storage tiering uh, technology that EMC invented uh, years ago to assist. Yeah, so and then from the Rackspace side, right, really what it means to our customers is is exactly what Jeff said, but um, in, I guess, would be more, more non-technical terms, right? It's the ability for, for you to take one array that is very capable of doing a multitude of things at the same time and allow you to put, you know, any combination, well, relatively any combination of, you know, SSDs for performance, SAS for semi-performance, NL SAS or SATA drives for storage, all inside one array, um, and that that's the, and, and like Jeff said, talking about the, the the software options that allow you to do tiering back and forth and all those kinds of th- awesome things that go with it, right? I mean, that's that's sort of what drives um, the word hybrid to me, right? It's a, it's not a one or the other; it's a jack of all trades. I, it, yeah, I also describe term. it kind of like as a Swiss Army knife for it is. solutions. So it is very easy to use, very simple, all in one solution. Um, that uh, customers can really take advantage of and um, use from small end uh, customers all the way up to enterprise customers, depending on what their needs are uh, in a very simple uh, management style. Yeah, the other thing I think is important to know too is is uh, you know we use obviously the VNX here at Rackspace, um, and and one of the reasons we really like it is it's so um, it, it's you, you talked about earlier Swiss Army knife right it spreads across the gamut of pretty much anything that a customer could need right you need something um, Relatively small, inexpensive for just capacity, it can do it. If you need something relatively large that has, you know, some some significant performance to it, it can do it, and then everything in between. You know, it is it is uh, it is very capable, basically, regardless of what you need, and it can do multiple things at the same time. Which is one thing I don't think customers really appreciate to it is that you know you can build multiple tiers of storage in, inside of VNX, and you know you know. Um, you may need your thing, and you may need your thing, and I can still boot both those in the same enclosure instead of having to bolt buy multiple storage platforms. So, I think that's important too. Thanks. That that, that helps a lot. I mean, I, I mean, things like virtualization come to mind, right? Where yeah. you've got a lot of like different application profiles for storage needs, and you don't, you know, especially forget Rackspace for a moment. But if you're operating your own data center, the last thing you need is like six different arrays because you have six different set of profiles for storage. You want you want like one platform that can do all the things and intelligently, you know, route the right tiers of storage to to different workloads as needed without having to, you know, sit there and twist dials and knobs every hour of the day, right? And that that's generally what this is the problem that this is here to solve. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Yeah. And it's flexible too, right? So as you grow um, or as your business or needs or applications change over time, it's flexible enough that you're not locked into something that you bought three years ago that's the only performance capacity thing that I can get. Um, yes, there are always limitations around what you can and can't do, but you know, if you deploy something that needs you know, four terabyte drives and you just need capacity and a year later you need some performance, you can add that in. It's not like you're stuck with just one box that does one thing, right? And that, that's also, I think... Uh, um, why customers love it. So what yeah. we do too. I think automation is another one. I oh, think, yeah, agree. You know, the system kind of does it itself. It allows them, uh, you know, the, the the input of data comes in, and, and a lot of that data for the first 30 days is very um, hot data that you like. But over, you know, 90% of the data over after 30 days really goes to that slower tier. Yep. So you can move that data. But when something comes back up that needs that more performance, then it'll move back up the tier. But it's automatically done, and it'll stay in that faster tier I, and, and be. Uh, accessible to yeah. the customer very quickly. The, and the, the word there is automatic, right? The fact that the, the array takes care of it for you is is one of the things that you don't have to worry about it. It allows you to build your array um, to be more economical for you and still get the, the, the performance that you expect out of it. You, know, you don't have to build something that's super performant because you may see a peak IOPS of XYZ at, at some point because with tiering, you're going to move data out of that hot tier down to some colder type, deeper, cheaper type storage um, that's going to allow you to be able to burst into that anyway. So, yeah, it's automatically taken care of and allows you to more economically build your array. Absolutely. And I think that the real power came, you know, roughly 2008 when EMC introduced enterprise flash drives into their arrays. Uh, you know, if you look at kind of just an IOP profile of an EFD versus a SAS or a fiber channel drive, you know, 180 IOPs from a fiber channel SAS type of drive versus, let's say, on conservatively 2,500 off an EFD. So you could do a small percentage of, of EFD flash drives in the array and make a huge difference. And it really, with, with you know, to the 
point you guys have made with, with virtualization, it really became to a point as these storage arrays became more high performance from a storage administrator perspective, it's very difficult to keep up with that, right? Because you could get a hot spot and, and this virtualization and the automation is at the sub LUN level, right? So the application is unaware of the movement, right? So you can literally move tables of an OLTP SQL database and it will improve the performance of that over, overall application without incurring any type of uh, issues on the front end. Very cool. So obviously very powerful stuff, very configurable. Then Marcus, so when we're talking about hosting these things, right, mm -hmm. taking them out of the customer data center and operating them on behalf of customers, what is, what does a customer have to know to like realize the benefits of this? Obviously, if they know a lot and have an opinion about the way things get done, we we can collaborate. But what if I don't know anything about Sam, but I know my application needs to benefit from from the features that it that it delivers, yeah. right? Well, I think and and this isn't just storage, right? This goes across anything. That's one of the advantages of having a hosted solution is you don't have to worry about it. Even if you know about it, you don't have to worry about it. I take care of it for you. You know, I'll present you a a lot of storage and you can do whatever you need to do and, and we'll take care of everything else. So it, it allows customers to focus on what's important to them or should be important to them, which is your business and what you're trying to operate rather than focusing on the infrastructure that you're going to need to, to do whatever you need to do, right? That's that's sort of why I'm here and what we do. Um, in, in specifics around the VNX, right, I think um, from a customer standpoint, really, you know, it all boils down to what's most important to you and what your needs are right now. Is it capacity? Is it performance? Is it price? Is it, and I know in a perfect world it would be one, two, three, four, five, right? But in the world we live in, everything is equally as important as the other, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, so again, it's all dependent upon um, really what the needs of the customer are, what they find is important or not important or more important. I shouldn't say not important, that everything's important, right? But, uh, you know, it, it orders of magnitude. Um, and then finding a solution that'll do what they needed to do in the, in the constraints of what they have. Um, so really, it's you know performance, capacity, price, and then really, are there any oddballs? Right, there are certain applications that work really, really well with certain types of storage, and some applications that don't. Well, that'll also drive to kind of where you need to go, right? Um, but really, that's it's. I think it boils yeah. down to that, right? Yeah, and I think some of the, you know when when they're looking at you know coming into a new location, they kind of, you know, we need to understand what the application is that the Correct. customer is using. That's number one. Correct. Um, and then we also got to understand, you know, is there a performance requirement? What's the capacity requirement? And then how fast is it going to grow over time? Yep. Um, and I think Rackspace does a fantastic job of really asking those questions with their customers and helping them design a solution over time yep. um, that will help them out. I, I will tell you one of the things that I think um, that service providers have the advantage of uh, from a customer standpoint, and it goes back to what you just said, right? So, and I'm not picking on any anybody else outside the service provider world, but you know, when you go to buy something from a storage world, you you need to understand kind of where you're going to be 10, 12, I'm sorry, 12, 24, 36 months, 48 months, maybe even 60 months down the road, because you need to plan accordingly. You want to buy something today that in a year down the road is useless because it's too too small, right? Um, so you need to sort of plan a little bit ahead and maybe even buy a little bit bigger than you need to or more than you need to because you need to be able to have a little bit of buffer there. One of the great things about a service provider is you don't have to worry about that with me, right? Because if 12 months down the road what you have with me doesn't work, we can expand. If it needs to go um, you know, past that or you need to upgrade or whatever the case may be, we can take care of that for you. So um, again, going back to Doug's question around you know, hosted it at a service provider, that's that's another advantage that you get. And just another kind of follow-on point, just from a data protection and also integration perspective, right? So if it's VMware, Microsoft, number of other virtualization providers, there are a ton of integrations that the VNX encounter. So Correct. from your vCenter, you can plug right into the storage. It's it's aware um, from VAAI and, and VASA and, and other plugins that VMware offers. Um, EMC was one of the first providers to to do that with the VNX. And also from a replication or data protection perspective, you know, Rackspace is very, very large with VNX and also with RecoverPoint, which I look at as kind of like a TiVo, right, or a DVR. So you can take a snapshot or a bookmark uh, of an event and, and let's say you upgrade the host OS to an S, a different SP. Um, and let's see that SP but blows up. You can always reverse back to that bookmark that you made at 12 o'clock and did the upgrade 12 or 1 and it blew up you can reverse uh, and bring that, that data back. 
Very cool. All helpful, helpful stuff. I, I then, then I guess the, the last question I would, I would have is so, um, when someone is thinking about consuming, say, a VNX from us, um, it's really easy to just think of that as like I'm buying a SAN, it's a line item on a SKU, right? But like that's a that means a lot of things, right? There's switching decisions to be made, and we have to think about shelves and sizing and you know spindle counts and all that. Um, but what it just can you just like in like 20, 30 seconds, kind of enumerate all the things that we deal with and, and, and work with when sizing the right SAN solution for a customer? Yeah, so I'll, I'll take 15 and then leave Jeff 10. Um, really, it's it's performance around, you know, what kind of which model, capacity, how much do you need, how much do you need now. Um, the performance also goes back to sort of drive configuration types. Is it, um, you know, what kind of drives, what kind of software upgrades do you need, um, and how kind of how all that kind of works together. So just to add to that, and I really want to go back to the partnership between EMC and, and Rackspace. And I came from the enterprise. I was an SE for the enterprise space within EMC. So it's great to see the level of partnership that EMC and, and Rackspace have together. But literally, we have 65,000 people deep at EMC, and, and it's just kind of uh, adding to the capabilities that Rackspace uh, has already with the, the expertise. But we will use a multitude of tools, such as VNX calculators and MyTrends, to actually look at your data. So we could take performance data from your current array, and it doesn't matter if it's a competitive array or an EMC array. We can look at that data and really architect the right solution. And on top of that, you know, we talk with the customers. So actually, myself and the other SC are on phone calls with customers like yourselves and Rackspace, really working through uh, what the architecture should look like and validating it. And I think understanding what the customer's end goal is too. What what's their end state? What what do they want to see? Um, and really designing it to to fit not to only today, but also what's going to happen in the next you know what we said 12, 24, yeah. and 36 months uh, is really important. I think sorry Doug, we took more than 30 seconds, but Fine. I think I think the one other thing too is that people tend to forget like um, you know we're here we're talking about storage we're talking about a VNX, but that is one of probably a multitude of things inside <laughs> your environment that. Right that all kind of need to be able to work together. And it's kind of like, you know, when you had a bunch of Legos and you could put them together kind of any way, but it kind of would really make a really ugly picture if you didn't put it together right. Um, so that that's the other one other thing that goes, in, you hit on it, like what your end goals are, what kind of what your entire environment looks like. Yeah, you know, all of that stuff kind of goes into play as well. Okay, very cool. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to, and, and as more I want to talk about, but we have to move on so because uh, we only get an hour. Uh, but let's jump into the whole flash thing. So um, I'll play dumb. What's, what's all the fuss about? Like, why, why, why is Flash driving such a shift in the storage industry before we even talk about the rack space stuff? By the way, does anybody else get the Queen song stuck in their head every time he says Flash? Flash. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's fast. <laughs> it's fast. All right, yeah. So, so it really comes back to physics, right, and, and what us storage ed engineers and, and architects and, and administrators have done for years, right? So we've always had applications that require a certain number of performance. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying to deal with that capacity and performance fight. You know, it's very hard to get that balance of either you have the capacity but you lack in performance or vice versa. And so with the advent of flash drives and, and EMC was one of the first to add it to the actual storage array and make it a hybrid solution and, and put some automation behind it. But there are still use cases out there where an all-flash type of storage array is the best fit. Mm -hmm. And so when you're able to remove those physical barriers, you know, short, you know, uh, short um, stop in the fiber channel tier and, and everything, you know, you basically, you're, you're adding more SAS drives, not for capacity, but for but the 15K performance, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it gets rid of that, and it you're able to kind of separate that, call it a, a bad neighbor, off of that hybrid array and uh, put on a purpose-built all-flash array. I think the other two things, too, that uh, have come into play in the last, for, for from my standpoint, from a service provider, not from necessarily from EMC to the rest of the market, right? But I think the other thing that's come into play in the last year or two is that um, the price of flash has gotten to the point where it's not, um, you know, it's not the 1% of the world that can afford it anymore, right? So it, it's more cost-effective. 
and with the other uh, added benefits around compression and deduplication, you don't have to worry about the old, um, you know, one of the disadvantages of flash was the drive sizes were smaller, like you talked about. So you don't get as much capacity, you get a lot of performance, but at some point, you know, two years ago, you can only pack so many 400 gig SSDs into a box and you're pretty much done, right? So the size of the size of the flash drives are getting bigger, the cost of the flash drives are coming down, and with compression and deduplication, I can actually store more data than what uh, is logically put into put into an array. So now all you know, you factor in all that stuff together. Now it's kind of like, ooh, now that becomes very interesting. Right. And I, I think that's uh, that's a great point, Marcus. Uh, I think that's the key, right? And and we could probably spend an hour just on dedupe and compression. <laughs> Um, you know, we call it data services. Although with, with deduplication, didn't we already do that? Is it right taken care of? Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's> I <know. laughs> so, I mean, you have inline or you have post-process, right? And there's some inherent challenges with post-process um, dedupe. And so with, with our all-flash array, we do inline dedupe in, in a fixed uh, block size of, of 8K. But what we do really is... Enterprise flash drives are great from a read performance perspective, right? You can get probably 5,000 IOPS off an EFD drive if it's just 100% read. But once you add writes, that's where the life of your drive goes down because EFD doesn't like writes. Um, so that's where those data sources really help us prevent the duplication of, of I.O. coming into the, the back end drive set. Got it. Okay, got it. And when you speak of those things, we're talking about features that are inherent to the Extreme I.O. platform from EMC, is that correct? Correct. Okay, cool. So that's a good segue then. So we've kind of talked about the the value of Flash, which I think is, you know, everyone pretty much gets, but it's good to sort of rehash it. And then um, tell us a bit about Extreme I.O. then as an offering from EMC and specifically what was in mind when EMC designed, what customer problems were in mind when EMC designed the solution and took it to market? I'll take that one. Yes, you will. So, so EMC is very. You know, I've been with EMC about seven years, and EMC is extremely good at acquisition. And we have a lot of smart engineers on staff, and we've obviously with Symmetrics and in, in the '90s and, and early 2000s, we've done a lot internally too. But we're very good at acquiring technology, and it's one of those things that we decide we could build this internally, or we can do it. Uh, you know, go out and acquire that technology or IP. And we do that because it's it's all about going to market. So we purchased, I believe we purchased Extreme I.O. in 2012 or 2013. I believe we went direct to availability in November of 13. And we did not have one storage array in the market. And within six weeks, we were the number one flash provider from a Gartner perspective, right? So in six weeks, just that's the power of EMC and the Salesforce. But what we had to do was we saw the track where customers, and, and that's where we get a lot of our acquiring uh, ideas, I think, is from our customer base. Customers were seeing the value, to Marcus's point, right? Flash was going down. I think I think back in 08 or 09, it was 40 times as more expensive to buy a EFD versus a fiber channel drive, right? And then I think in 2012, it was nine times. Um, but there's still a lot of value there beyond just the dollars and cents. And so I, I think we saw the opportunity of going after that market. And so we went out and purchased an Israeli company, Extreme IO, um, and, and it's all public information out there. But um, what we did was we kind of, let's, let's say that we enterprise classed it to EMC standards. So we actually delayed the launch for probably six to nine months to make sure that we had the architecture in place uh, which which is very important, right? You're, if you're building a home, you know you can add a you could buy a single story home, and maybe 10 to 15 years later you're like, hey, I want to add a second story. Well, if you only have a slab or if you have a foundation made out of bricks, it's very difficult to add a second story, right? So we really wanted to make sure the architecture of Extreme IO was solid, where we could easily scale and add. We call them X bricks, and they come in 10, 20, and 40 terabyte raw. Um, we're able to scale to those those use cases. Yeah, and I think from a standpoint, I think as we evolved, data became so important and data analytics and uh, crunching data so quickly um, that, that that all flash requirement of performance became a necessity in the market. And you're correct in that we grew the business so quickly 
Um, you know, we own 31% of the market share, or number one in the, in, in the all-flash uh, array space today. Um, we had, uh, you know, a $1 billion run rate business today in this. So you can see that this is not a small market. This is a huge market growing very quickly uh, in, today. Um, actually, in, with EMC, we have 50% um, of the Fortune 100 companies use Extreme IO solutions today. So it's continuing to grow and and become a very popular requirement uh, out there. I, I also, and this isn't me, you know, this is Rockspace, not EMC, right? It's it's, uh, And this is not necessarily Extreme IO specific, but going back to the all-flash, it's the next evolution, right? You know, we talked about it 10 years ago. Everything was mostly SATA, a little bit of SAS. You know, five years ago it was little bit of NL SAS, a little bit of SAS, let's add in a few SSDs. Now pretty much everything is, has some combination of SSD, SAS. It's the next evolution of what's coming. It's going to be, you know, um, it's going to be the new standard, I think, at some point in the, in the future where it's, we, we just talk about, you know, uh, EFDs and SSDs and long go. I, I still think there's going to be use cases for, you know, your, your uh, I call them low and slow, but your big, you know, uh, you know, four, six, eight, Big ten D. terabytes de drives, right? I mean, those are still going to get around, but, you know, do I need 300 gig SAS anymore when I get an SSD that's cost competitive to it? At some point, mm, probably not, you know? Right. So I think it's going to be, I think that's where it's going to really make its mark. Yeah, I think it's really squeezing out that middle tier, right? Yeah. I mean, I think her 1.6 DFD yep. size, and we're at, what, six, eight terabyte near line SAS? Yep. Um, so, yeah, and we're getting away from 15K drives, right? You're seeing a lot more 10K spindles come out from a SAS tier. Cool. Excellent. Thanks. Well, good good overview for, for me anyway. I, uh, then I guess my next question for Marcus and is um, after you drink your coffee is uh, what, what are we doing with it here at Rackspace? What's our, what's our game plan, boss? So yeah, any customer that actually has a need for it and, and, and absolutely positively needs it, we can do it here at Rackspace. So just like in anything else we talk about at the VNX or whether it's an Isilon or whatever in the role else you want to host here at Rackspace, we can do it. Um, I will caution people that everyone thinks they need it and everyone thinks they want it. Um, and while we talk about the price of SSDs coming down, it is still an expensive solution for a lot of customers. So um, like Jeff talked about earlier, we, we work really well with EMC. We'll do some partnership things. We'll run some tests on your data. We'll take a look at what you have. But if it's the right solution, absolutely, we'll support it for you here as well. Um, and it's it's I think it's going to be, like I said, I think it's going to be the standard at some point. I think right now for most customers, you know, forget the Fortune 100 and the big guys, but I think for most customers it's still sort of just a little bit out of reach. But, you know, at some point it's going to become the, the, you know, this is what things are going to be. Just app, new applications are going to be designed to run on things like this, not, you know, your your Commodore 64s of the past, where you know, etc. Right. So I think it's going to, it's still going to be the the the, the next step of, of what customers need to do. And, and you know, from a Doug, from a performance perspective, right, just to kind of give some reality behind numbers that I that I've seen. Um, you know, you look at a 10 terabyte X brick. Um, and, and that could roughly do about 125,000 IOPS, right? Mm -hmm. And you're talking not milliseconds, you're talking microseconds of, of latency at times, depending on the application. So uh, in the enterprise space, I have seen, and, and mid-market, I've seen a lot of things change where they were able to improve all the SLAs back to the business, and they were able to get that report to come to them at 3 a.m. versus 9 o'clock in that morning to be able to see their entire financial picture uh, throughout the organization. I think there's other use cases there too where I think you know things like data analytics and data warehousing and and all of those things as data and da as the data sets continue to grow and grow and grow and customers and, and, and everybody in the world wanting to run more analytics and get more information out of it I think it again it just I think it continues to prove um, its value it's just where are you as a customer along the journey and, and at what point are you ready just to jump in? Right. I think it goes back to what you know, we talked about. It's always about what is the customer running into problems? Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is it something where I'm not re running my report overnight? Is it something that I need to be respond quicker to my customers within you know, hours rather than days uh, and being able to get that answer so they can go back to their customer and provide what they need uh, in a reasonable fashion? So. I, I think the other thing to know too is as, and I don't want to go down this rabbit hole because we could spend another, you know, the hour after another we spend hour. on deduping compression, we could spend on this one too. But there's also, because of the, the awesome um, 
things that we've done in the other technologies, like the VNX, let's take the VNX for example, right? There's also a point where I can still do enough hybrid VNX to get enough performance that it probably meets, I'm making up a number here, 80% of my use cases that I need, right? It's where does that breaking point happen when I don't, when a hybrid array doesn't make sense for me anymore, I need to go totally into the all-flash market, and where is sort of that, you know, where do I cross from one peak and going down the other side, uh, what does that happen along in my journey, right? And I think most customers that I see and most customers that I talk to are still at that not quite over that hump where I can't get away from the hybrid um, or I don't need to get away from the hybrid. It's not a can. I could, but I don't need to. And then where's that next? Probably like that 80-20 rule, you know, 80%. Yeah. Probably that, yeah. uh, you know, the VNX hybrid can can manage that. Um, you guys also do VMAXs, but then uh, it really is going in. Uh, um, that extreme mile would take over that 20% of really that high end. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing that, that factors in there too isn't even around performance or anything else. It's cost, right? If you right. look at if you and I am going to pick on Extreme IO for a second because we're all talking about it. If you look at the cost of an Extreme IO two years ago versus 12 months ago versus today, right? The cost is coming down. So that helps that barrier of customers who are like, it's just priced out of the uh, at a price point that it doesn't make sense. I'm going to stick with the hybrid. Well, the price keeps coming down. My decision keeps getting easier and easier and easier, right? Which is where I think, again, I go back to I think this is going to be the next standard as we go. Yep. Yeah. And I think it comes back to Rackspace and EMC. We, we follow kind of the same philosophy with choice, right? We offer we, – we don't try to go into a customer and say, this is all we can offer – you must be on this, right? We offer a, a number of different storage solutions, Correct. infrastructure solutions, software solutions, and it fits, right? All applications are built differently. So there's use cases where it makes sense to not just have Extreme I.O., but a hybrid array also. Correct. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's interesting. Like, from my perspective, and of course I work at Rackspace, right? So um, I, one of the things, you know, one of the things I know, even from back in my days as an SE, was that it would have been nice to have you know, even a few years ago, access to all flash arrays for the odd use cases that really demanded it. And, and they existed on the market, right? But but the challenge was, in order for us to deliver them at service provider scale, you know, we'd have to get in bed with, like, some really niche vendors that, like, we don't really know what their future looks like, right? And, and I think enterprises have had that same struggle, too, which is like, man, I really would like to have this, but I have to go... Who are these people? Uh, like, and, and I'm going I'm to make a big bet on this expensive array. And, and I think being able to get it through EMC, like, uh, like I know from our perspective, is huge because uh, when we source as a provider uh, this type of technology from EMC, who we've got like a long, extensive relationship with, right? It's definitely a lot easier for us to feel confident offering this type of solution to our customers because we know we're backed by EMC, right? Um, and so, yeah, I, that that definitely I think is a big a big piece of the value when I look at what we can pass on to our customers is the fact that like you know we're not off on an island supporting this on our own as Rackspace. We've got all of EMC behind it, helping equip Rackspace with the the tools and skills we need to deliver it effectively. So it's it's pretty great for us. Um, yeah. Let's talk about, did we have any additional discussions about use cases or case studies we want yeah, to Yeah, I just had a case study, you know, auto manufacturer, you know, kind of some of the things we were talking about, right? They were running into some critical warranty and, and recall analytics application, and obviously it was very storage bound, uh, about 2,000 reports per day, um, and they were doing ad hoc, so it was a very random type of I.O. that they were doing. Yeah, uh, traditional storage they were utilizing. Uh, they even had some issues with destaging, right? So destaging out of cache to the back end disk was was hurting the overall performance. Yeah. So you know, EMC and and others have gone in there with Extreme IO. I think they uh, they purchased four 10 terabyte X bricks, um, and just they're getting three to one dedupe and compression. So I think it's very important, right? Talking about tool sets that Rackspace and EMC has, um, we have kind of like a dedupe utility that we can run on your data um, or on your current VNX or, or storage platform to really get an idea of dedupe and what the compression will look like. It's, you know, there's a lot of marketing out there that, hey, I'm going to get 30 to 1 dedupe or I'm going to get 6 to 1 dedupe off this OLTP database. I'm very conservative and I'd rather test the data to say, you know, we're actually going to get maybe a 4.5 to 1, which is still great, right? but at least we can size it correctly up front and, and set the expectations. So they were able to 
30% improvement in the jobs they run per day. Um, they've removed, you know, a lot of barriers. They're, they understand their business better, right? It really gets you out of the plumbing and really concentrate on what your business plan uh, is all about. That's great, and and thank you. And and I believe that that case study is one of the one of the downloadable assets that we're providing for this deep dive series. So if you're watching now, you should be able to fill out the form and get your hands on that as well. Hey, Doug, before we go on, something I want to mention, and I wanted yeah. to talk about this at the beginning, and I failed to, but um, I, again, not to go down another rabbit hole, but just stuffing a bunch of SSD drives into an existing array does not an all-flash array make. And I want people to make sure they understand that, because we get asked a lot of times, well, can I just fill a VNX up with SSDs and have an all-flash array? Well, technically you could, um, but again, purpose-built all-flash arrays were designed around to minimize or to eliminate all the inefficiencies that you have to build in from the, the SAS, the NLSAS, and the SATA compatibility along the way. So again, just want to make sure people understand, just because you stuff a bunch of SSDs does not an all-flash array make. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, similar to also a 4U server stuff full of drives does not a SAN make. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> we see that a lot, too, uh, sometimes in competitive yes. scenarios. Um, I won't go there, but uh, yeah. Absolutely, and and we can and, and those are the types of conversations we can have too. Uh, if if customers or prospects want to reach out and talk to us, our our, our sales engineers are glad to sort of unpack that whole discussion Absolutely. in real time for people. Oh, um, let me ask you this then. I again, I got to watch the clock. I storage man, we could talk about this for days, um, but we got to jump into the ops piece. So. Um, and that's going to be kind of a rack space heavy discussion, I think, because that's kind of what we do here, right? We're sort of like ops on demand, right? And so um, let, let's talk a bit about the like the, the ROI of the service provider model as it applies to storage um, from all things like procurement, management, operation, you know, because we, you know, especially when we talk storage, we talk to a lot of customers that run their own data centers. And, and so... And for us that live in the service provider world, we take a lot of this stuff for granted. But if if you come from a world where you run all the stuff in your own data center and that's your way of life, you probably have a lot of questions for guys like us when we're like, nah, nah, we'll do it for you. You're like, yeah, yeah how? Right? So can we kind of enumerate some of this stuff in more detail for yeah. people that might be watching? Absolutely. So, Doug, to keep me honest on time because you know me, I'll talk all day. Sure. Um, no, so, it, and again, this is a, it's a sort of a general sort of statement, and everybody is a little bit different in where they are and where your expertise lies, right? But um, one of the things that I think a, a service provider, specifically Rackspace, I am biased, again, I do work here, um, brings to the table is, you know, you talked about it, the ROI, and here's kind of how I explain it to customers. If you are a customer and you don't really know what you need, you're not necessarily just adding another shelf or adding another array, but you don't know what you need, by the time you figure out what you need, architect it, get someone to review it, get someone to approve it, get it quoted, assuming you already have a DC and have DC space, get that thing ordered, get that thing deployed, get that thing up and running so everyone's you know doing it. If you're lucky, you can do that in three months. I would expect you know most customers that I talk to, six to nine months seems to be the average. right? I'll do it for you in 30 days, soup to nuts. And, and that's one of the advantages of, you know, Doug hit on that. This is what I do every day. Customers that, that you know, certain customers are very good at doing certain things because that's, that's what they do. That's their business. This is my business. I will help you figure out what you need. I will get it. I will get it deployed, and I will get it up and running and hand it over to you, you know, within 30 days, right? So now you've just talked, you've taken a nine-month or six-month, maybe a three-month ROI, and you've turned it into 30 days. Well, that's pretty significant when you start looking at it that way. You're also not stuck with a bunch of assets that you don't have to, that you need to figure out what you want to do in three months. You also don't have to have expertise across everything that you do, right? We, again, we're talking storage because I'm here. But your environment just isn't a storage box. You're going to have compute. You're going to have networking. You're going to have maybe multiple types of compute, right? Am I doing physical? Am I doing virtual? Am I doing, do I have VMware? Do I have public cloud, private cloud, whatever the case may be, right? I mean, your environment is your environment. I have experts yeah. across the gamut, right? So yeah. instead of you having to go hire a DB guy and a storage guy, by the way, you're not going to be able to hire one and do 24-7, 365 either. Um, but by the time you do all that stuff, you know, hey, it, it gets expensive, it gets complicated, and what happens if you get it wrong, right? And that's the one other thing that customers are coming to us today for is because there are so many options out there. It's like Dana Analytics, right? You could pick one of 30 or 40 different people or companies to do data analytics. What if you get it wrong? 
right? Now you're 12 or 18 months down the road, and now you've got to, like, you know, do I fire the guys that know how to do this and go hire guys? Like, you don't have to worry about that with me, right? Um, so that's sort of the rack space story. And then when you add in with a company like EMC, right, that makes my job and life easier because everything that, everywhere that I've wrote into the problems, I've got the guys that I call, right? You know, if we're having issues with the configuration, uh, we have EMC engineering support and SC support. If I'm having procurement problems, we have EMC support. If I'm having support problems, if I'm whatever the case may be, like, you know, for the value that I bring to a customer to take it off their plate and make it easier, EMC is the next level of service for those guys that they never see behind the scenes because anything that I run into, I've got a team behind me too that, that can help, right? So, and, and partnerships like that globally, by the way, which I think is even more important to point out, when you have those same relationships regardless of what's going on, who the customer is, the DC, doesn't matter, all of that stuff fits in, the, and then, then you talked about SLAs, right? I can guarantee things to a customer. I can guarantee four or five nines of, of, uh, of, uh, Availability, 100% network uptime, those kinds of things. Hardware replacement guarantees because we have those partnerships and those relationships built in um, that take care of all those things for us. Yeah, I think, uh, and you spot on. I think you know, with customers and growth and making sure they do it right, but being able to get up and running in 30 days is is key. Uh, Rackspace and EMC have done lots of things on the back end to make that a streamlined process, to make it very easy for customers. Um, you know, almost basically an automated solution um, for that. And we've worked very closely with Rackspace on the support side. We believe EMC believes in the Rackspace fanatical support. Um, we've designed special solutions uh, for the servicing Rackspace and their customers to provide that end-to-end -end solution um, and making sure everyone is happy. Uh, and as you said, uptime is critical to customers mm -hmm. and making sure uh, everybody is moving forward and concentrating on your business, and not just you know, where's my storage, what's it at, um, and, and the customer can go work on selling more or doing whatever they do better uh, instead of having to worry about, you know, hey, what's in my data center, what am I doing today? Yeah, and they don't have to worry about getting it absolutely correct the first time either because I do enough volume and I have enough customers that, you know, if you get it wrong day one and need to tweak your environment, you know, 30, 60, 90 days in, we can do that, right? We have mm -hmm. the flexibility to allow you to, to potentially get it a little bit wrong. Now, if you get it really wrong, uh, you know, data migration and whatever the case may be, and you know that gets a little bit hectic. But you know we have the ability to make it semi-flexible or as flexible as we can based on what your requirements are and, and what you need, right? Um, the other thing too, I think, is important to, to to point out is you know we talked about Extreme IO and we've talked about VNX, but for all the other things that we do with partners like you know with, with partner with our partner EMC, I can't get that out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't change regardless of the technology that we use, whether it's an Isilon or you talked about a VMAX or whatever the case may be, right? It is a consistent uh, experience for not only Rackspace but for our customers across the board. And, and you know, it's not I have an experience here and I have an experience here. and you know, No, it's none of that, right? It's all, it's all the same. Yeah. It's very repeatable. That makes sense. And, Which and I like. Not, you know, just kind of my opinion, right? It's technology, right? You're going to run into a problem at some point, right? There's moving parts, you know, technology in general. And I, what I've seen Rackspace has done for their current and, and subset of, of customers, you know, even if it's not hosted by Rackspace, we've been involved not only Rackspace but EMC just to help that customer out. It, that, that, that array or technology may not actually be on a Rackspace data center. And we've all, as a team, said, hey, they're a customer of Rackspace. We're going to go in there and help them. And to have the closeness that we have with Rackspace versus even an enterprise account, we can get into the levels of support very, very quickly with, with Rackspace and EMC. When people ask me about the relationship, I tell them two things. One is I have a bad phone, which I really don't, but I really wish I did, right? So when, when we have an issue with, with anything regarding you know an EMC product or service, um, I don't pick up the phone and dial 1-800-EMC. Like, we have a team it's inside EMC that we escalate to immediately because when, you know, when, when EMC has learned along the way, when Rackspace says there's a problem, there's really a problem. This isn't a, have you tried to reboot? Have you hit the, uh, none of that crap, right? So, <laughs> so that's, that, that's one thing that's important to note. And the second thing is we've built an up, up enough a relationship where we, I'm not going to tell you EMC drives their uh, roadmap based on my recommendations because I would be a fool to tell you that. But I th we influence it. We have conversations with their teams because, again, the needs of a service provider are not always the need of an enterprise customer, um, specifically when you start talking about my scale, right? Um, I tell this story, and the customer shall remain nameless, but we had a customer that came into Rackspace, and they're like, here's what I need to do, ABC. 
And we're like, okay. And they're like, well, we already tried EMC, sent an EMC piece of gear, and they say it can't be done. And I said, really? Yep. Okay. So we picked up the phone. We said, AEMC, I need this thing to do ABC. And EMC said, okay. And the customer's like, how the hell did you do that? And I said, because we spend more money than you, right? No, we have that We have that relationship with those guys along the way that, that um, you know, we have been able to do things that benefit not only us, but other customers and providers that EMC deals with. Um, at the same time, provide, you know, absolute, um, not absolute, but good, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Candid feedback back and forth between the two around what works, what doesn't work, this is awesome, this is not so good. Um, and we've been able to work through a lot of that stuff together, which, you know, makes everyone's life a whole lot easier at the end of the day. Yep. And we work with with Rackspace. It, it, when we go back is when we're creating products, we let Rackspace beta test them mm-hmm. because at scale they, they can test it in so many different ways and they've seen so many different uh, iterations of how a solution needs to work or how a, a piece of, uh, you know, storage needs to work that they can find out exactly what, it does great, what it may need to be uh, improved upon, and we get great feedback between the two organizations, and that allows when a product comes out and gets productized because, you know, Rackspace does a strenuous job on productization and making sure it provides the solutions to its customers. Uh, It's great for our two companies. And even as of this morning, we just got Rackspace into another beta program that's going to be announced at EMC World 2016 in Vegas. Um, So, you know, it really goes down to the smallest of customers of EMC and, and Rackspace, their influence over, I call them BUs, but product groups, right? You say Rackspace and you tell them the numbers that they have on the floors and they're like, we would like to talk to them about roadmap and see what our roadmap looks like mm-hmm. to, to what their needs are. Okay. So it's it's really interesting. The, the one other piece of that too is, you know, we talked about this whole support model and, and we have different support models for different things that we do here. But, you know, another thing for customers to understand is on staff, my staff, Rackspace. I've got roughly 75, plus or minus a couple, um, certified by EMC engineers on my staff on your gear, right? So it's not like I'm inexperienced when it comes to dealing with their stuff. And you talked about the beta stuff. We'll test things that we don't even use sometimes just to see if we can break it for you. I mean, it's one of those, it's a very healthy relationship from both sides that, you know, I appreciate, by the way. Yeah, well, when we're a tough customer, I mean, we we have SLAs that we're, contractually obligated to meet and storage is at the foundation of an uptime SLA right like if it, uh, 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 for, for an application and so um, we, we take that stuff seriously because you know we, we really have to push on our on our vendors to deliver platforms that we can operate thousands of times over yeah. each and every day right um, so yeah I, I, I can see us being quite quite the account to work with but, yeah. but it, <laughs> and I think it comes down to when when customers of Rackspace come come to them and say hey this is what I need or this is what I'm looking for and this is this is my goal Rackspace knows you know they they have the experience to be able to be you know the expertise to go in and say this is exactly what you need yeah. this is what's going to get you from st- where you are today to where you want to be you can be in a hybrid cloud solution be dedicated uh, cloud they will put you in the right place and, and feel comfortable and make the customer feel comfortable where they're going to be. And, and right. Doug hit the nail on the head earlier, right? It all comes back to, you just talk about it, I can do it a thousand times over, right? And I think that's the other piece, too, that, you know, certain certain partners like EMC have learned along the way that there's not a whole lot of enterprise customers that have thousands of VNXs deployed. I mean, there are going to probably be a few, but not that's not the majority of, like, you know, the majority of your world, and, and that's where we fall into is the... The, the sheer scale and the numbers and the repeatability and the knowledge that goes along with, you know, I joke, you know, if you're a customer and you see a problem with the VNX, I've probably already, or if I've already seen that, fixed it and dealt with it uh, in some sort of automated fashion 100,000 times before you'll ever even see it. So it's, it again, it goes back to my ability to, to continue to provide those, those services to a customer um, so they don't have to, right? They don't have yeah. to worry about it. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm doing a quick time check. We've got about 10 minutes and some change left. Um, we've been pretty light on viewer questions this time around, so we'll do two things. I've got one in the queue that I'll take, unless any more come in. And then the other thing I was going to ask is, uh, Marcus, we had talked about helping viewers ask the right questions, right? Um, yeah. And so let, let me take this first. Let me drop this first question on you guys, and then uh, we'll dive into that and see if any more pop up along the way. So um, the viewer question is, 
Uh, what types of environments make all flash cost effective? Is it just reduction in time and resource consumption? I think, you know, where where it's going to be important is, um, you know, what is the outcome that you're looking for? Is it applications, if it's a database or it's a data warehouse, and you, you need to have answers very quickly. Um, at some point, you, that amount of time, time is money. And if, if, if you can get that information to your, you know, to whoever it may be, executives or whatever in a faster time frame, you know, that's where the cost may be, you know, a requirement. Um, I'm not an EMC sales guy, right? So here's what I would tell you. When I look at it, for me, um, it boils down to a couple of, it probably boils down to three or four factors kind of put together, right? Um, how much space do you need capacity-wise? Because, yes, data reduction could be important, right? Again, if you've got a couple hundred terabytes on of storage and you can wedge it into a 40T or a couple of 20T bricks or two 40T bricks, then maybe. So data reduction comes into one. Performance is really probably the number one thing we should talk about because if you don't have some specific performance requirement, continue with a hybrid array. Um, but if you do have some performance requirements that you're that you're having problems meeting on the hybrid side, then then absolutely talk about it. Um, and then kind of meld all those things together around, you know, it's it's also space consolidation too, right? Because we talked about if you take it a hybrid VNX that has on a little couple hundred terabytes, you're probably, you know, it takes up, I'm making up space things, takes up this much room, but a 40T brick takes up like this much room, right? So it is really data center or space consolidation too. So factor all that stuff together and kind of mush it into the Play-Doh ball and, I mean, it's it's really, that's kind of where I see the, the, the huge advantages. I'll take one minute on that question. It's a great question, by the way. Um, yes, it is. Run into a lot. So, you know, I had an experience uh, in my former former life where an uh, enterprise level customer was looking at all flash versus utilizing their current VMAX for this workload. And let's just call it, it was going to cost a million dollars to fix the VMAX in order to work that workload into the VMAX, right? Between professional services and adding engines and dynamic cache partitioning and the EFD drives and everything else, right? Versus, you know, the, the less expensive Extreme IO solution so there's an acquisition cost comparison there, right? Um, I, I think it gets more into what is a soft cost and what's a hard cost, right? So I think I saw something with Walmart one time, right? If if a customer at Walmart just pushed their cart away and said, I'm done shopping at any retailer, what is that cost, right? Well, I'm going to go to my neighbors and say, well, I'm done with that retailer, right? There's a cost to that. So I think if you're not getting that report done by the time you need it, or not providing tax records to your customers in time, there's a cost there. It might be soft, but you should be able to monetize what that cost would be. So I think that's that's where those efficiencies turn into actual hard costs. By the way, this is why these conversations can never last an hour because there's so many variables that go into it. I joke, like, if there were three things I could ask and we could all be done, none of us would have a job, right? But, um, you know, the real answer, I think, to your question, Doug, is, is unfortunately... It depends, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, there's a whole lot of variability um, that goes. By the way, that's another thing, again, shameless plug for Rackspace here, um, that we can help with. We have people who can walk you and talk you through all of the questions that you can have regardless of what your your questions are, whichever path you go down. So don't hesitate to, to kind of, like, if you want to talk to somebody about your options and what those may be and see what ballpark pricing kind of looks like or whatever the case may be, Doug's going to fill you in with all those details. But, I mean, that's that's... It's what we do. Yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, well, then let's do this. Marcus, I know you had some thoughts about what customers should ask their prospects when they're coming to a provider to talk about hosted storage. Correct. So, You, what, just, what, you, you need what you a got? credit card number, expiration date. <laughs> um, no. Um, sorry. I think I think it really boils down to, first, first and foremost, application. What is your application and what does it need? Because that's... If your if your hand is forced by your application, then you, you then go no further, right? Because if you have a I'm making it up, you have an application that only will run one file, then don't be asking for block solutions, right? It's not going to work. Um, so application is number one. Um, is it is it being forced by application? If it's not, then what is your application desire? Because some applications will work on more than one type of storage, but it works better on one or the other. So just have that in the back of your mind too. So again, application being number one. Second for me is a blend of performance and cost. Um, I'm sorry, performance and capacity. It's a, it is a it is a blend of which is 
you know, more important. It goes back to the all flash versus hybrid conversation we've been having for the last 45 minutes, right? Is it is it pure capacity? Probably not. Is it pure performance? Probably not. Um, it's usually a blend of something in the middle. And so where does that sort of fall in? Which is which is more important? You know, if it's 50-50, so be it. But it's probably going to be 60-40, maybe 70-30. And is it more important to get that report out or more important to have extra storage sitting around in case you need it, right? Um, those are very general statements. But, you, get, you know, it's a, it's a blend of those two. Um, and the third one really comes down to price points, right? Um, you don't want to go design a Ferrari with a racing engine and put, you know, all, all this awesome stuff in it and have a, you know, $2,000 budget. It's not going to work. Um, so be realistic with what you're asking for, but be, also be realistic on the, the compromises that go between the two, right? Um, I hear this all the time, right? I need X cents a gig. Okay, well, what do you need it for? Doesn't matter, that's what I need. I need a price point. I can give you a price point, right? But the question is going to be, is it going to work for you? I have no idea. Is it going to do what you need to do? I have no idea. Well, that's sort of important to me that it actually will perform. You know, it's like walking into a dealership in a car. I want a brand new car and I want it for 10 grand. Done. You have no idea that you just buy a two-door, four-door motorcycle. You have like you you have no concept, right? So having having a couple of those things along along the way will help, rather than just trying to drive to a price point. It's a blend of all those things together, but those are sort of my three in, in the order in which I think they're important. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's helpful, and I I think it's also good for people to have in the back of their mind because I do know as someone who worked in the the pre-sales world here. It, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit off-putting to a customer that engages with us, and they they're used to getting quotes from a bunch of vendors, and then we show up and we're like, "Well, let's have a conversation." They're like, "Why yeah. do you why are you asking so many questions?" Right? right? And 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 then that's the point there, right? We really have to like work to look across all the different dimensions of a solution and think about how they'll impact each other because we have the task as a service provider of integrating networking compute. Uh, software, storage hardware platforms. So we have to integrate all these things, and so it demands that we ask a lot of questions. Um, so being prepared for that really helps yeah. make that process go a lot more smoothly. I learned, I learned a long time ago there's no one way to do everything. Right. Right? So if it, was, if it was black and white, then absolutely the question, you know, ask, answer these three things and you're done. Do you want small, medium, or large? You know, it's like when you go to, you know, would you like to supersize that? No, but you know, it, there's no one way of doing it, and that's what people don't understand. And, and, and customers tend to get frustrated. Um, because we do ask a lot of questions, you know. If a customer comes in and is like, you know, hey, uh, I want to quote a VNX and your competition is cloud files. And I'm like, that's object storage <laughs> versus block. And they're like, yep, it, that doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about that. Just And so it, it gets frustrating because it's kind of like, you know, are you asking for price comparisons along the way or just a better price? Are you looking for a solution because the one that you have isn't doing what you need to do? And, and by the way, Doug, I, I apologize because I think number two, going to my earlier thing, would be, are you having problems today? And if you are, what are they? Right. So when you talk about questions to ask, application, are you having problems? What are they? Performance versus capacity, and then price. I think because if you're already having problems today, I want to know about that so we don't do right. the same thing that you just did, right? Right. Um, and a lot of times customers are, are leery of telling that. I would be too. Like I don't necessarily want to show my hand or or you know, kind of you know. Whatever. I know. I know, but it's not, it's not it's not like we're negotiating over a rug in Morocco. I agree. <laughs> I agree, right? But, but you know, a lot of times that's that's hard to get our customers. But if there's already things that they learn, hey, I want to learn it too, right? I don't want to make I don't ever want to make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I definitely don't want to make your same mistake again, even though it's my first time, because that you're you're coming to me because of something, right? And I and I think that's a challenge overall, right? I think for everyone in the industry, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes price is the number one when you get the buyer's remorse because you did buy the cheapest solution or, or, you know, what you decide on. So, obviously, we work with budgets every day. We understand there's an, a finite amount of money that could be spent, but it's really getting down to an apples to apples comparison yeah. and just highlighting what are those differences and are those differences making a difference? to satisfy their overall workload. I, I joke, you can always tell a product guy from a sales guy, right? Product guy me. I want to design a solution to let you go negotiate price. Like right? the sales guy wants to negotiate the price and then force feed some sort of, 
you know, uh, architecture on me. So uh, I, I it, it, it all depends on it all depends on who you're talking well, to. Well, it's right? great. But it's, it, what it is? It's great with my job, right? Because all my solutions are five million dollars, right? I, I let I let the sales guys deal with that, but I really, you know, put myself a little, and my, he puts a little Jeff Ally buffer in there. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, you know, myself and the other SC, we really, really worry about the architecture and the solution. And day one, it's performing. I we don't care about price, right? We let we let everyone else yeah. deal with the price. So. Yeah. We want well, the right solution in place. Well, between all of the folks involved in the team, we we, we, we always get we always get it done, right? So I uh, that's that that said, I have got to wrap this up because we're at time and uh, and our viewers got stuff to do. Even though I know they just hate to click the button and leave us, but um, thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. Quick, just summary key takeaways I had is that. Um, when it comes to storage performance, right, there's this performance means a lot of different things. There's performance in the, the aggregate when we talk about hybrid solutions where you're dialing in the appropriate level of performance for a multitude of workloads uh, in scope for being served by a deployment of, say, VNX. Um, but there's also performance in the context of breaking down performance barriers that might have inhibited you from taking on a project in the past and using something like Extreme IO uh, to now take on a challenge or take on a project that was previously not realistic to pursue, right? It's a whole new paradigm for storage performance. Um, the partnership between Rackspace and EMC, I think if, we, if anyone's taking away anything from this 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 uh, show today, it's that we're, we, we have all spent a lot of time working together. Um, and uh, any other final thoughts from you guys? And you literally get like 10 seconds each, Max. I'm good. I'm good. I think it's a great partnership, and uh, Rackspace is a, a great solution and a great place to be. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for inviting me back, Doug. Yeah, any anytime. Uh, folks uh, watching, please do uh, visit the rest of our schedule at rackspace.com slash deep dive, where you can check out uh, the previous sessions and also see the upcoming future sessions. And also, please do take the time uh, to fill out the form and get access to the assets that we talked about today, but uh, we're not able to show due to a few technical difficulties. So um, thanks again. We'll see you next week where we talk about SQL performance and the SQL 2005 end of life with Sarah Barela, a.k.a. SQL Sarah from Microsoft. Thanks so much. See you next time.